Yeah. We met the classic way that artists meet at the age of seven and a half mm -hmm. when you turned up at my primary school. So we've known each other for whatever that is, 36 years or something. Yeah, that's a long time. Mm. We would sit next to each other and I remember all I did was doodle on, you know, on paper. Ken handed me one of those drawings and I sort of churned out a caption. Yeah, that was genius. That's when I first realised that you were something special. <laughs> Momentarily. Yeah. Well, I feel like our role kind of reversed now, now that you're writing the words and I've... Kind of yeah, now I'm handing you the art and saying, do something with this. Yeah. So I wrote Leaving LA in the last few months I was living in LA and I was pretty down because I'd lost four years of, of work on this animated film that had been shut down. You know, I'm not the sort of writer who goes, oh, these are my feelings. I'm, I'm much more filtered than that. I go, okay, I'm feeling pretty angry about this, that and the other, but what if that is useful? Mostly though, I'm trying to find the things that I go, what would make an interesting song about this experience? Oh. One of the very few positive things to come out of my social media addiction is that I started seeing Ken producing these incredible animations and stop motion projects and all sorts of cool stuff. It seemed so obvious, especially because I was, I'd written a song about leaving a town where I'd been directing animation. And suddenly there was this old friend doing much, much cooler stuff than I was ever involved in. Well, I was surprised when you asked me though, because I'd only been doing very short animations. And even though, I mean, five minutes doesn't sound like a long time, right? <laughs> I sent Ken the song and he said he'd like, he liked it. Um, and, and it's quite a long song. It's even long for a song. It's long and it's very specific and yeah. verbose. It's, yes, it's very like, Tim Inch. Like all my songs has got words <laughs> and it's, it's not like you can just go, oh, I guess it's just images. It's very didactic, you know. And we sat down and we, were, we had a conversation about two dimensionality and how I thought, hmm. I think we agreed that the idea of this, this sign that's so famous is such a great metaphor for Hollywood in that it's something people travel to see this sign and it turns out to just be this sort of slightly disappointing two dimensional thing and how that can be used as a sardonic representation of the town in general. And so we're talking about making something where there'd be a two-dimensional me who's trying to get his three-dimensionality back. Yeah, that's right. I remember one of the first images you sent me was taken from the back of the Hollywood sign. Yeah. And you just see all the unglamorous Scaff. scaffolding and just the bits of and bits the that are holding towers. it together. And that's why when you see the animation, there is so much of the construction of the animation that we show. is revealed. Yeah. yeah. I think it kind the of... dirty underside. Exactly, yeah. yeah. This whole world that you get put into is flimsy, yeah. flat. And if you just get a peek around the corner, you realise that it's sort yeah. of sorted. So the big mistake you made is when, well, well, I, I I, I'm going to do a Zootrope version of this song. And you thought it'll take six months, right? Six months, yeah. I thought it would be two you, birds with one stone, right? Yeah, you thought I get yeah. to follow this passion for zoetropes that I'm developing and I'll deliver this thing to Tim and right. it will cost a bit and take six cost months and we'll, we'll get it done. And don't have to do the tedious thing of, of doing a stop motion. Yeah, that's we'll right, do because it spins instead. itself. It animates itself. So how long did it take? Oh. From that meeting to probably. now today? <laughs> probably a year. We've done everything that you would normally do in stop motion and arranged it all around the disc. The hilarious thing about this form that Ken's kind of thrust into a whole new level is that in order to try and make someone look like they're moving, first you film them moving <laughs> and then you cut it up into pieces. Oh, yeah, it's like ridiculous, you, you, it's right? A, like the people who invented zoetropes were trying to get to film. 
and, right, and you've got backwards. film yeah. and you're going, you're, you're pulling <laughs> the film. So you know, you've got me animated singing. That's the accuracy of your stop motion in the car. Mm. To do that, you film me singing at yeah, 24 yeah. frames a second. Then you get each frame and cut it up and then reanimate it. It's, it's really stupid. It's really stupid. It's, a yeah. re, it's, like Thank the, you. it's like a massive waste of time. It's like digging a hole and filling it in again and then digging it out again. It sounds like a waste of time, but you can't fake no. that sort of stuff. No. It would have been much easier just to do that in After Effects. Yeah. Just take a, a no. still of the car and just put yeah. some paper texture on you and don't even worry about printing and cutting it out. No. But then you don't see the edge no. of the paper. You don't see the misprint from the printer. You know, you don't see all the tactile. Yeah. And then and you wouldn't you think... put me in a toy car either. I mean, you wouldn't you... think of putting it in a toy car and then you wouldn't think to go from a different angle from the car to show that your band members yeah. are... Just pieces of paper flapping around. Yeah. My greatest fear is that people are going to think there's some trickery in this movie, but but there's no. It's mechanical. It is mm. utterly analog, except for the capture of it, which is all on iPhone. You can explain the maths behind it. You can you can understand. I mean, I don't understand it in my head why it works. But when I turn it on and I look at it through camera, it's, I'm still, you're immediately like, I'm still oh. back to the first time I saw it. Because your brain isn't doing maths. It's tricking you into yeah. it's, it's something coming to life.